Learning how to regulate and slow your brain waves down is something that we've been very, very interested in. When you teach people how to do that, it could become a skill. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the brain starts to relax and it moves into less of that chatter that takes place in your brain and more of kind of an imaginary state, the brain sees in pictures and images, it's more creative, we're moving into that alpha state. So now the door between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind opens up as we get beyond our analytical mind. And our analytical mind is actually what separates the conscious mind from the subconscious mind. So as you slow your brain waves down, you get into alpha, you're entering the operating system. And that's where you can rewrite a new program. That's where you can rehearse a new script. That's where you can begin to plan your behaviors in, a, in, a, in an intentional way. If you, if you can't change your brain waves, then it's like your computer running amok with all of those programs and you yelling at it, telling it to stop. You're not in the operating system. Some people can get to the point where they're so relaxed that the body's in a light sleep and yet they're conscious and awake and now they're in this theta brainwave pattern. And in theta, that's a hypnotic state. We're very suggestible to our thoughts. Mm. We're very suggestible to information in that state. And that state then is where we see the most change take place. And so the person can literally change from the inside out when they learn how to get into the operating system. People do the best with what they think is available. That's my belief. And if you're unaware that you can control your emotional states, you'll rely on something outside of you mm. to do that, whether it's a computer game, whether it's a Netflix show, whether it's a drug, whatever, whatever it is that you need to make that feeling go away, you're dependent on your outer world. And I think that's a hypnosis, that's a conditioning. To teach people that you can actually regulate and change your emotional states, you give them the tools to literally step into a new future. So that process, of course, is extremely uncomfortable. And it's, the question is, how long are you going to stay in that emotional state? And 50% of the story that most people tell about that past experience isn't even the truth. Because mm. they're, they're making things up and they're doing that so that they can justify why they haven't changed since some past event. Most people reach a point in their life where they reach crisis or disease or diagnosis or loss or betrayal where they finally go, gosh, I, it's time to change. Mm -hmm. I think change is an ongoing process and the more we change, the more we should see evidence in our life. That makes it exciting. Anger and frustration and control and hatred and envy and jealousy and insecurity and unworthiness and guilt and shame and suffering and depression those are all derived. Those are emotions that are derived from the hormones of stress. And psychology calls those normal states of consciousness. Those are altered states of consciousness. Because in stress, the physiology is that we're knocked out of homeostasis. We're knocked out of balance because we're perceiving some threat, some danger, some emergency. And so the stronger the emotion you feel to whatever stressor there is in your life, the more you pay attention to it. And so in time then, you have to keep your attention on all the important elements in your life. So you sit down to do a meditation, and when you're living in stress and you're living in survival, there's only three things that are important in that moment. Your attention is on your body because you gotta preserve it. Your attention is on something in your environment, and what's in your environment? People, objects, things, places, and you're very preoccupied with time. And when you're in stress and you're in survival, the brain goes onto a default mode and it's naturally trying to predict the next moment based on what it's learned in the past. And so as you always try to forecast the future based on your memory of the past, you can't be in the present moment, right? Mm -hmm. So, and yet our, our model of change, what we discovered is that the only way a person can change is when they get beyond their body, they get beyond all the elements of their environment, and they get beyond that predictable fusion of familiar past and they sink into the present moment, which is the unknown. So if you can't do that because of the hormones of stress, most people will sit down and they'll say, oh, okay, I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to start this process where I'm going to rehearse how I'm going to be today. And they start thinking about their cell phone. They start thinking about all their emails. And they start thinking, I can't meditate. There's something wrong with me. It's my mother's fault. You know? And they actually believe that thought to be the truth. And then they get up and they, they actually reaffirm it. And they say, I can't meditate. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> I can tell you that if you are willing to see that 
thought is just the thought in your brain and you're curious what's on the other side of that thought, yeah, you're going to feel uncomfortable. But if you had some tools and skills to apply and you were able to take your attention off your cell phone and settle your body back down into the present moment, that would be a victory. And then your body would say, come on, you got to feel a little frustration now. You got to be impatient. You got to be judgmental. Come on, that's what you always think. That's how you always feel. And you, like an animal, you settle the body back down into the present moment and you tell it it's no longer the mind that you're the mind. That's a victory. Then the body says, uh, hey, dude, you're super busy. You got a lot of things to do. You got a lot of people to see. You got a lot of places to go. You got a lot of things to do. And you've been doing the same thing every day. Your body's going to want to get up and do something. You don't want to quit because your brain's telling you that you can't do this. If you had the awareness to settle the body back down into the present moment, you would be executing a will. That's greater than the program because most people lose their free will Mm. to those programs. And it's that tedium in the beginning that is an uncompromising will where you keep training the animal to stay, to take all of its attention off the environment, to get beyond all the cravings, the feelings, the habits of the body, the drives of the body. And catch yourself defaulting to that predictable future, bringing your body back into the present moment, siphoning energy back your attention into the past based on those familiar emotions of the past. We've discovered that if you're willing to do that for just a few days, you could actually liberate an enormous amount of energy from your body. You go from particle to wave, from matter to energy, and you're literally transmuting those limited emotions into elevated emotions and something really beautiful happens if you're willing to fire the crucible and sit through that long enough all of these emotions move that energy moves right up into the heart and the person starts falling in love with life they start feeling this state of gratitude this gratefulness to be alive this ineffable word of relaxed and awake And something really magical happens when we've discovered uh, this little simple thing. When that energy makes it to the heart, there's only one place it wants to go. And it goes straight to the brain. So the person starts relaxing into their heart when they feel this feeling. And the more they relax into the heart, the more their brain all of a sudden starts becoming aroused. And they start going into these elevated gamma brainwave patterns. Now, gamma is not unconscious. Gamma is actually super conscious. It's actually super aware. You're outside the program now. So when that occurs and the brain goes into gamma brainwave patterns, what we discovered is not it's not a little gamma. It's not a lot of gamma. It's not a whole lot of gamma. It's a supernatural amount of gamma. And we start seeing these brainwaves where we see theta start carrying alpha and alpha starts resonating with beta and beta starts creating high beta and high beta starts creating gamma and you see these standing waves of brain coherence happening and the person feels so amazing that they don't want the moment to end and so we see when they put their attention on their heart like like filling a gas tank we see on the gauge of the on the scan this very low frequency start rising in the heart. The, the energy that the heart uses to, to function actually goes up because they're placing their attention there. And where they place their attention is where they place their energy. And then you see the parasympathetic nervous system come up with it. That's the nervous system of relaxation. And then we see it kind of drop. And we see the sympathetic nervous system starting to go up. And now sympathetic regulation is an arousal, Right? But the arousal isn't fear. The arousal isn't hatred or aggression. The arousal isn't pain. That's the arousal created from survival. There's only one other arousal, and that's ecstasy. That's bliss. And the person all of a sudden feels connected to something greater. Now, here's the beauty. We we, we can see people do this in 15 minutes. The most important takeaway around all of this is that feeling that they're feeling is not coming from anywhere outside of them. No person's doing that. No 
wardrobe change is doing that. No sports car, no football game. Nothing is doing it to them. It's actually coming from within. That is the moment they stop looking for it outside of them, and the love affair begins. And so when we start feeling these elevated emotions, these more selfless emotions, it's not like you have to try to forgive. It actually is the side effect of you changing your emotional state. You no longer want uh, because you feel so whole. How could you want anything? So we, st- we, we started interviewing people when they had these moments, and, and they had such an incredible amount of love that they felt. Their, we measured their oxytocin levels. Their, the love chemicals were very elevated. Uh, uh, their, the amount of gamma in terms of coherence was 200, 300, 400 standard deviations outside of normal in coherent gamma. Now, three standard deviations outside of normal in gamma is about 2% of the population. 200, 300, 400, a lot of energy in the brain. So the brain all of a sudden is receiving an enormous amount of energy. So we've discovered relaxed in the heart and awake in the brain. And that process of transformation is your willingness to sit Pass that thought, pass that emotion, keep training the animal, and sooner or later you can recondition it to a new mind.